Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Disco Elysium. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that he shows to join me today as we look for a bag. And uh, then we're gonna try to get the corpse out of the tree somehow. That butter sign is a write-off for sure, says this person. This person was shouting when we arrived over here because that butter sign is a write-off for sure. Ooh, I can see that guy. He was calling for Barry. Good morning to you, officers. This is outrageous, somebody says. Hmm. Men on Waterlock. He seems to have a knife? A burly man hangs out by the waterlock, carving up a generous serving of salami with an old hunter's knife. His eyes are fixed on a man stranded on the other side of the waterlock and on an enormous billboard that has fallen down into the canal between them. His posture is relaxed. Despite his powerful build and a knife in his hand, this man resorts to physical intimidation only infrequently, if at all. Do you know what caused this wreckage? And I'm going to point at the smashed billboard in the canal. I wasn't here to witness it, but those look like tire tracks on that sign. Weird, huh? Then again, plenty of daredevil drivers in Rivershell. Too bad it also takes a year and a day to repair anything around here. Especially a water lock. The rest of the coast is closed off till then. Hmm. Well, it's, it's a good thing it's going to take only until Wednesday. Do you know what's further down the coast? Well, there's the fishing village, an abandoned fish market, a bizarro church. Not much use to the congregation, though. There always seems to be something wrong with it. He thinks for a moment. Yeah, not really much else. Just bombed out ruins. Can I have a little salami? Sure thing. He cuts a slice off of the salami. It is salty. It is savory. It is chewy. The hangover only makes the salami more tasty. Want some too, officer? He turns to the lieutenant. Why not? The lieutenant ponders the offer for a moment and then decides to go for it. He takes a slice of salami from the man and chews on it. Right. Uh, bye. So that guy is stranded over there. Well, tough luck for him. Anyway, let's see if there's a bag in this container. There are fingerless gloves for my electrochemistry. Gasoline-stained fingerless gloves in navy blue. They've been worn threadbare, but being made of wool still provides some warmth and comfort. They have plus one to electrochemistry because the cigarette stained fingertips will be shown. So that is that is what we have. And I'm just going to stick with the interfacing. Interfacing can be really handy. So what do we have over here? Roy's Pawn Shop. Fast cash for faster times. Uh. Ooh. More Nosafed. Yeah, that just adds to these things. When we uh, want to heal, we just click over there. And uh, better better healers or better healing items will just add more charges. Nosafed is basically the simplest. Although, a little bit of salami is also the simplest. So, we're going north because we want to go to Frite. Or Frit? I don't know. The gardener over there told us about it. And I'm walking, you might have noticed. And the reason for that is because... Um, you know, we... Oh my god, look at Kim just walking with a fast... with that, Not fast stride, but a long stride. What do we have over here? Goods from the lorry haphazardly litter the surroundings. And we have Fawn written over there. We have Wild Pines written over here. And the Whirling in Rags. Closed for winter. Please use main entrance. Hmm. Oh, look. We have a statue back there. Welcome to Ravishol! Says this guy over here. We're going to talk to him later. I am uh, a man on a mission. Oh, it, it seems like there's people... Right to work! Right to work! Uh, it seems like there's people... Um, aggregated here. I... Uh, I'm, I'm going to... They're the strikers, most likely. Frite! Sick! Exclamation mark. And I believe what that means is actually lowercase s-i-c, period, in between parentheses. Which I, is an abbreviation for a Latin word, but I'm not actually sure what it, uh, what the Latin word is. I do know what it means, and you write that when you're doing a quotation of something that is not correctly written. 
so you note that you wrote it correctly as as is quoted, but they know it's a typo, and uh, that's that's what that's what that sick there is saying. We're gonna be able to ask why it has three T's. That's the point, because no language has three T's, right? There's, there can be there can be languages with three T's. Ooh. Kim just as, 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 assumes his position over there. <laughs> Yellow roses, dozens of them. Tulips, too. Yellow roses are so lovely. What do we have over here? A melancholy pop song plays on the radio. They didn't correct that. Melancholy is a noun. It is the state of melancholy. A melancholic is an adjective. And uh, the I think the, the mistake... And it should be melancholic pop song. Uh, the, the, I think the reason why English speakers mistake melancholy for melancholic, which I never do because in Portuguese it's very different. But in English, it is, I think, because people think melancholy is an adverb. Well, you know, like, um, uh, let's see, slowly, for example, is an adverb. But adverbs in English can be used as adjectives. So you can say a slowly song, even though it sounds weird. You know, it doesn't sound. It, it's not incorrect to say it. It sounds a little bit weird, but you're you're using the ad, the adverb as a as an adjective, so you can say the slowly song. And if you think of melancholy as something that is melancholy, and it, it, for some reason you'd think that, but uh, if you think of it as an adverb, uh, an adverb, you can just say the melancholy song as the slowly song. But that doesn't. That's not how it works. It's melancholic because it comes from melancholy. But melancholy is a weird way to pronounce it. It's incorrect, the incorrect way to pronounce it. But it's just an English word. You start start with a, the beginning. Yeah. The tear machine stands in the corner. A sign says, one bottle equals ten cents. Hmm. What's this machine? Hmm? The clerk looks up out of her magazine. Oh, that's the tear machine. Yeah, but uh, w what is it? She knits her brows, confused. It's a machine for tear. You know, you find tear outside, like bottles or whatever, and put it in the machine, then it gives you money. I see. And how do I pick tear from the, for the tear machine? You need a bag, I guess. We used to have some, but we gave them all out, so... She shrugs awkwardly. Feel free to use it if you find a bag, though. I'm sure there are some out there. She points outside. Somewhere. Okay. Well, if you don't have bags in the shop, can I ask you about things? Oh, right. <gasps> Is that cigarettes back there? Welcome to Frit. Feel free to look around or something. Everything is out on the shelves. She returns to her magazine. What's that magazine she's reading? What? What's the magazine you're reading? You mean this? She looks at the cover, boasting a colorful photo of two girls kissing. This is Pop Stars. It's got, like, famous people in it. It's not for sale. Looks like it also has something called Police de la Mode, featured on page 34. This speaks to you. I said before, I think, uh, that uh, I said something about French. I'm not actually sure the languages in this game are supposed to be real-life languages. Police de la Mode is that sounds like French and I, I understand that French a little uh, it, it it also I have the advantage of speaking my native language being a romance language which helps a lot as well but it basically means f the fashion police or it can also mean the fashionable police and I'm pretty sure it just means the fashion police I approve of this very futuristic I'm gonna tap on the girls kissing she pops her raspberry flavored bubblegum and nods her shoulders tense she shuffles back, only slightly. Bewilderment and repulsion root her in place. That is the correct response. I tapped on the girl's kissing. The lieutenant frowns at you before turning to the clerk with an apologetic half-smile. That's very interesting. I, I mean, it's, it's only expected, honestly. <laughs> the point... They're not reacting to... I, I think they're not reacting to me saying that I approve of this. I think they're reacting to me saying very futuristic. Because, of course, you know, that's that's a, that's a really lame thing to do. <laughs> obviously, the word progressive does mean... Pro does come from progress. And, obviously, the lack of discrimination and taboo and, uh, and uh, stigma and all that is a progressive thing. 
but to associate it with the future is also dismissing the 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 reality of the current present saying you know seeing seeing two girls kissing and being like oh how futuristic is like dude girls have been kissing for centuries <laughs> it's it and also it, it, i think well it depends because of the setting obviously but the point is i think they're reacting to the very futuristic bit and honestly i didn't expect them to but it makes sense as well uh, and I say that m more out of the reaction from Kim than from her reaction. I don't know. Uh, but before I go on, sorry. I, what is this Frita? I don't know. Frit? She shrugs. Yeah, and what is Frit? A 7 to 11 grocery store. Why is it written with the three T's? I think they think that the extra T makes it funkier. She chews on her gum with disgust. It doesn't. Mm-hmm. Let's proceed. I have some other questions for you. Um, okay. I'm not really supposed to be chatting to anyone, but... She puts down the magazine. Uh, can you tell me anything about this <laughs> reality we're in? Reality? You mean, what reality? Economic reality, or...? N no, I, I meant the physical reality. I don't know. What about it? What is the revolution? When ordinary people take over the government and, um, demand democracy. <laughs> I like the way that she said it like that, as if it were obvious. She's not guessing. She's, I, she sounds like she doesn't understand why I don't know what it, what it is. What about the one we had here in Ravishol? Yeah, it happened like 50 years ago or so. Sorry, I'm not very good at this. At history, I mean. Hmm. And the coalition, what's that? Someone told me there's one. Our government? Or do you mean something else? Sorry, I really need to finish this article. She taps the magazine on the counter. Uh, I won't bother you with this nonsense anymore. Cool. She seems happy to return to her reading. Uh, can you tell me anything about the dead body? Um, I don't really know anything. I mean, I know it's there, but I haven't seen it, so... Did you know the man who died? Not really. Not really? Does it mean you knew him a little? Um, no. I didn't know him at all. Oh. How long has it been there? I don't know. Really long. Hmm. What do you think happened? Um, I don't know. No need to worry. The lieutenant's voice is soothing and professional. It's just standard procedure for us to ask around. If you hear anything, let us know, okay? Okay. She scratches her nose. Thank you for your help. Uh-huh. She brushes a strand of hair off her face and tries to return to her magazine. Okay. Yeah, she's just the, cur uh, the clerk. Oh, wait, is that croissants? You see several packaged raincoats fill a low shelf beneath a display of croissants and juice bottles. The raincoats are transparent, except for the big Fritta slogan on the back. See, I pronounced it in a way that doesn't that, that doesn't completely come out of nowhere. That is a pronunciation that people could think of when they see that word. The packages are small, discreet, sloppily stacked, making them easier to take unnoticed. No need to worry about knocking over a display. And there's a raincoat over here. I could try to steal it. That would be for my savoir faire. It is only... It's a red check, though. Which means if I fail, she probably does... is not going to like me. Uh, what's that? I'm going to point to the raincoat. What is what? The girl leans over the counter to see what you're referring to. Um, it's a raincoat. If you want to buy one, then it's only for Royale. She taps on the glass counter. The raincoats patiently await purchase. Her attention is drawn to the raincoats. Stealing one undetected will now be more difficult. Hmm. Yeah, I could get one. Uh, I mean, I'm not gonna get, steal it. I wasn't ever. But thank you, interfacing. Uh, I, I want to buy a raincoat. Here you go. The clerk removes the garment from the lower shelf and hands it over. Thanks. I think ultimately it might not be the best use of our money, but I think I can use it. Oh, over my cup thing. 
Mm. It's a Frite plastic raincoat. A transparent plastic raincoat with Frite, sick, exclamation mark, written on the back. The package photo shows a group of happy Ravisholians dancing in the rain. At least it's not just one person dancing in the rain. <laughs> Part of Frita's army for plus one endurance. Uh, I'm gonna go with it. Even though, actually, our esprit de corps. You know what? I think I'm gonna go with this. It looks more fashionable. And uh, it, it, it goes better with my sh my pants. And that's that's all that matters. I'll see you later, ma'am. I didn't even get the tobacco. Let's go back inside. Excuse me. I uh, think there's something back here. What is that? A colorful display of cigarettes and alcohol bottles line the shop wall, inviting you closer. The bottles wink at you in the light. The smokes, too, glitter in their wrapping. It's like looking into a kind of heaven. Your knees are weak. There, in that dark green glass, all in vain. The great flowing river of warmth, wine, alcohol, beer, alcohol, love, alcohol. I'm gonna say nothing, just stick it in. I'm obliged to inform you that both alcohol and cigarettes damage your health. She comments as you eye the goods behind her. But I guess you already know that. I... Do you... you I... Yes, I, I do al already know that. Please, tell me more about these products. Um, the Pale Age Vodka is special, I guess. It's stored in pale for a couple of years, which makes it super expensive and super strong. What is pale? You know. She shrugs, uninterested in explaining it further. Don't worry your pretty little head about it. Let's concentrate on what's important here. Okay, so what will consuming this stuff do to my body? I mean, I already said it'd hurt you. I don't know what else they do. She stares at you, unsure. Do they sell any under-the-counter vices? No. She fixes her hair underneath her cap. Frit only sells legal drugs, like the law says. Hmm. I think she's full of it. But maybe... Maybe she's not? My character didn't detect anything, so I'll leave. Uh, I'll, I'll get 290. If I can find some tear bags or whatever. That is what we came here to do, after all. Ooh. There is money back here. 34. Nothing too shabby. You're not debardeurs, you're criminals. Says that person over there. Honest work, honest pay. Hmm. I'm trying to figure out what, you know, if these people are striking or not. Because this guy was saying right to work. And right to work is a specific term used in uh, American politics to the note... A type of law. Oh, I think there was there was more money over there. There was indeed. Can I go back there? Let us through. Somebody shouts. Yeah, it's to, the, to denote a specific type of laws that forces unions to share whatever bargains they gain uh, in a in a specific job. So, for example, if a union negotiates with the employer that uh, everybody will have uh, everybody in the union or every worker, I suppose, will have like for example a 20 minute break each morning or something like that, then in right to work states or in, in states that have right to work laws, then uh, the people who do not belong to the union will also get that uh, 20 minute break in the morning. And what that does is that it, it, it's, those are laws that are, that are they're called right to work laws uh, because you have the right to work without paying union fees. That's where the term comes from. But those laws exist to dissuade people from entering a union because there's nothing to gain on the immediate so if you're if you get union benefits whether you're in the union or if you're not then why would you be in the union and pay the dues uh, that is the that's why the laws are passed they're union dissuading laws come on guys i need this says that person over there seems like yeah we're gonna come back that guy over there they could be striking but we're gonna come back and we have ourselves some magnesium. We have this gentleman over here. I'm sure I'm gonna love what he has to say. Actually, I don't know. I'm trying to remember what his political affiliation is. He's a very political character, as some of them are. And actually, <laughs> in that area that we were just at, most of them are. 
but uh, we still don't have access to this, so I don't know if I've made any political choices yet. I don't remember exactly where it shows. The, you know, oh, my character. No, no, it's not there. But I think it is there. Once you click there, you're given your points in each thing. But I guess we don't have a bag. I'm very sad. Rue de saint Guillaume. Guillaume. 8B. Yep, that's where we are. What is this thing? You see a set of tire tracks in the brown slush that covers the plaza mosaic. What kind of vehicle drove through here? Hard to say. Your vision is blurred and you're having difficulty concentrating thanks to your relentless hangover. Why am I looking at this? Cop habit. You look at everything. That's true. This isn't case related, you think. Hmm. That's our logic kicking in there. So I can reconstruct the movement. But if I can give myself some extra visual calculus, which I don't believe I can, but maybe I have... Maybe I have... Uh, I don't have bonuses. There's one thing this game does, and I think I confirmed it in my first playthrough, is that because, like, for example, imagine we have minus one savoir-faire over there on those pens, and you can see over here the savoir-faire is at minus two. If it is a minus two or a plus, or it doesn't matter, it shows up over here. But imagine I had, like, my shoes gave me savoir-faire. Actually, the shoes specifically take my savoir-faire away. But imagine they gave, basically that thing would go away. It wouldn't say anything. So, in a situation where you would want to remove your pants to get your savoir-faire up, don't read too much into my phrasing, um, you can't rely on the bonuses from items side over here where it really should say savoir-faire zero and you should be able to hover over it. Um, yeah, in a situation where that happens, you can't rely on this thing to tell you whether you should remove or add some clothes. So, or specifically remove, because that's what you want to know. If you if you want to, like, I want to do a suggestion check. I look over here, I see a suggestion minus, and, uh, well, guess what? I need to remove, let's see, well, in this case, a white satin shirt. So I take my shirt off, and then I look over here to see if there's any suggestion things. Well, actually, removing my shirt for to increase my suggestion. That looks, that sounds about right, actually. But uh, the point is, yeah, the inventory, they might have changed it for the final cut. I don't know. Oh, look at the building. Huh, that's curious. That's very curious. Anyway, let's move in. What do we have? Some reeds, some footprints, a kid throwing things at a dead body. Smells like spoiled meat and curdled dairy. A human being decomposes. It does, doesn't it? This kid's ladder is rickety, but still climbable. Is it? Ooh. The ladder's for kids. It wouldn't hold the weight of a grown man. Yeah, Kudo, fuck him up! Somebody says. It's that kid back there. I know. I know it's that kid back there. Someone is trying to grow herbs in this greenhouse. Huh. That, that's the gardener. We got a little bit more money than some magnesium. I think I might be able to start smoking pretty soon. What do we have over here? This winch mechanism has been oxidizing for some years. That's known as rusting. That's what oxidizing is. Oh, we got things back here and whatnot. Oh, we can't go up there right now. What about this thing? An inconspicuous pile of the roofing material, Etonite. What is this? It's nothing. Someone just left some roofing material slanted against an old shack. Why am I looking at this pile of the roofing material? Because there's a secret door hidden behind the panels of Etonite. That's why they're too orderly. I'm gonna pull the panels aside. There it is. You see a shabby little door. Hmm. What is this then? A tool shed? He picks inside. Let's investigate. Let's not do that right now, Kim. I want to talk to that kid, at the very least. I also want to get the body out of there. I'm not really sure what's going to happen. There's also something back here. It says it's got an R over there. The letter R wears a crown. On the ribbon below, a light above descending. The ribbon has a name. 
and it's it's got one of it's one of the most the least memorable names ever, but it's a really weird name, and I never know the name of that thing, but that is a weird name. This trash container is locked. The sliding lid has a padlock that says whirling in rags. Why am I looking at you, trash container? You're just a trash container. Maybe you're prioritizing it. Maybe I am. How do we get the lock open? We could try using a pry bar. The one you took from my motor carriage, or... No, or pry bar. We might want to ask for a key from the manager of the Whirling in Rags. He probably has one. And he also has information. Thanks, Kim. Uh, I could just try to force it open. Not having the tool on my hand is a bit of a problem. So let's equip it. Because we can. That's not the one. This is the one. Okay. Jam the tool under the lid and pull. Actually, this is a good a good opportunity for me to show you. Let's do it. It's a good opportunity for me to show you what happens and also confirm to myself. We are gonna do a three percent chance. There's never lower than three percent, but uh, that I mean, it is a chance. No matter how strong you think you are. This is really not something you should be attempting to do with your bare hands. And now it's locked. But if I invested in my physical instrument, the chance wouldn't go up, but uh, it would be unlocked. And now because the pluses and minus changed, I can do it again for 17%. Force time isn't happening. You've jammed the pry bar under the lid, but it just isn't bending. I rolled about as as badly as I could. I almost rolled a a three percent. Nay, uh, well, it was a, a two and a one, but I rolled a seven percent instead. What is this? Your triceps ache for the metal to bend, but it resists. This calls for a potent curse to help break its resistance. Utter the power words. The fuck kind of metal is this? This is fucking shit. The quality of metal is not the problem. From what I see, it's sturdy enough. I'm gonna hang from the pry bar with all my strength. There's a creaking sound as the pry bar slips under the lid. You hang from it like a moron, huffing and puffing. Clearly the technique is wrong, but nothing else comes to mind. Kicking the container? Unsatisfying. Hurtful. You hear a ringing sound, but not quite hollow. The can seems to be full. Full of itself. Content. Happy you failed. This snickering trash container is having a grand old time. Well, that's it. I can't pry it open. Let's ask the manager for the key. This is clearly not working. You're right. <sighs> You're right as always, Kim. Kuno's got this, says Kuno. You got you got the the rock throwing. Kuno's got this. <gasps> He's got a new voice actor who is a lot less annoying. But Kuno was is very annoying. Hmm. The boy throwing rocks at the dead body can't be older than twelve. Oh yeah, Napa Gumpy Kuno Yells the other kid behind the fence. Hey, kid, a word. Police business. Right in the dick, Kuno. Get him right in the dick. The children ignore you. It's loving in the dick. The boy is sweating profusely. His eyes are like two black holes and his jaw is twitching as if trying to break free from the empire of his body. Hold on. What does that mean? The kid is obviously high. Really? Stop getting high at my crime scene. Fuck that! Kuno, yeah! Right in the mouth, though! Shit himself? The rake, Kuno! You should throw the rake at him, Kuno! The fuck? Does Kuno know what a rake is? Kuno's not a gardener. Kim, what, what should we do? We shouldn't do anything. I don't tempt such forces. What forces? You will see. <laughs> 
I will see indeed, Kim. I will. But not this episode, because we're out of time for the day. So for right now, I'm Criminal RPG, and this has been Disco Elysium. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video. But above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.